Wu Tip Wind and Rain threat continues as Delilah forms in the Eastern Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 14th. Well, the tropics are quite busy right now with code orange on our status at this time. Um, wind and flooding threat continues from what was Typhoon Wutip. We've put it back down to a tropical storm at this point with a high-end one at this time. And our 30th storm of the year, Delilah, formed a little bit earlier on in the eastern Pacific and is very broad and producing storm conditions along the coast of Mexico. The Atlantic is quiet right now with no areas of interest, I am pleased to say. Um, day 14 of hurricane season, no areas of interest or any warnings. However, it's a different story in the eastern Pacific, which is off to a really hot start to this hurricane season. A tropical storm warning in effect for Lazara Cadenas to Playa Perula on day 31 of hurricane season. The Lila there off the coast, um, it will remain off the coast, but is quite large and is producing storm conditions nearby. And Wu Tip producing a red typhoon warning for Western Hainan at this point, the first tropical storm and typhoon of this 2025 Pacific typhoon season. And is going to be moving inland for good a little bit later on today. In the North Indian Ocean, things are quiet right now, no areas of interest, although an interesting looking uh, cluster of thunderstorms there off the west coast of India did investigate it. It doesn't look like it's going to be a tropical cyclone, uh, but certainly producing some storminess along the coast. In the southwest Indian Ocean, you can see what numbers we got in the southern hemisphere as a whole this year past, or this season just past. Uh, no warnings or systems active now, and as you can see, it's a very dead basin well into the off-season now, but we're still showing them just for the time being. And in the Australian region, also a quiet basin, big frontal system there off stretching into the South Pacific, but apart from that, very little going on. Some very high, a high trail of cloud there over Central Australia. Let's check in on our two storms then, Wu Tip. First of all, here it is. 70 mile per hour winds, 983 millibars, 20.4 north, 108.8 degrees east as of 8 a.m. China Standard Time this June 14th. So, uh, red typhoon warning in effect, orange typhoon warning further north as well through the Leedsu Peninsula. 72 kilometers from Iman, which is on the northwestern side of Hainan. 76 from the island of Weisu to its northeast. 126 from Bel Hai, also north of this storm, 147 from Haiku on the northern part of Hainan, and 187 from the major city of Zhangjiang. Here's Delilah, our newest storm, the fourth one of the eastern Pacific. 45 mph winds, 995 millibars pressure, 15.3 degrees north, 102.7 degrees west as of 6 p.m. Um, Central Standard Time. I forgot what I was saying there. This June 13th still. 285 kilometers from Baradi Potosi, the closest point of land. 289 from Zihuan Tenejo, 299 from Lazara Cadenas, 447 from Manzanillo, and 648 from Preda Vallata. So let's take a look at satellite imagery right now of these two storms in particular, but everything else that's going on as well, there's Wu Tip. It may be trying to get back itself together again. It's not looking too bad on the first visibles this morning, although when we look at the infrared imagery, it does show that the northern side of the eye wall is getting particularly weak at this point. Could it build back up in the small time that it's got before it reaches its final landfall in the mainland of China? Uh, quite possibly, but at this moment in time, it is just that little bit weaker, 70 mile per hour winds, southern side is the strongest at this point. Still quite a tight circulation going on at all levels, uh, so it still has that structure that it could take advantage of those warm waters. Radar imagery here as well, the storm did make landfall and was over land for a time, that was the main catalyst for the weakening there. The radar actually showing that it might be the eastern side that's the strongest there, and um, possibly an eyewall replacement cycle, can't tell, it's quite a tight system. And this is a look at Delilah then, 
and the Eastern Pacific in general there on this first shot, uh, but we're going to have a proper look at Delilah now. Here it is on the latest satellite imagery, and it is a very large system. Um, it's obviously mentioned before around 280 some kilometers away from land, and yet the clouds are reaching that area as well as some strong winds, which is why there is a tropical storm warning in effect for this storm, and yet there wasn't for, say, Barbara, which was at a similar distance from land but was much smaller and didn't cause any inclement conditions on land really but this one is due to its large size 45 mile per hour winds it will probably get a little bit stronger at least to mid-range tropical storm strength perhaps a little bit stronger if it manages to get itself going properly but it will run out of time pretty soon and run into the same problem that the other storms have had cooling sea surface temperatures in the US uh, you can see a low level low pressure system there uh, and the front moving off towards the east and this is the Caribbean region where you can see some storminess occurring off Nicaragua which is going to get a lot of rainfall over the next few days one of the world's hot spots for rainfall in the next seven day period Delilah easily visible on this East Pack imagery and behind it what might be our next system and we tip there of course moving in through the Gulf of Tonkin rounding that corner around Hainan on the back side of it moving into the mainland of China. Bay of Bengal region as well you can see there a few thunderstorms there monsoonal in nature and up towards the western side of India that big cluster of storms there as well. Southwest Indian Ocean looking relatively quiet interesting low pressure system there over uh, the southern part of Africa but in general it's a quiet picture and across the Australian region a similar story there as well might get a bit breezy in the southwestern part of Western Australia and there's also a front there moving into South Australia at this point as well. And in the South Pacific, a front moving off well to the south of Vanuatu and some thunderstorms, tropical thunderstorms blowing up over those islands. In fact, Fiji looking pretty quiet, as is most of the other islands of the South Pacific. And this is a look at Europe right now where you can see one of quite a few massive storms that blew up across France and northern Spain earlier and also moving across the North Sea tonight. Looking at sea surface temperatures, the Atlantic is looking pretty good now, around 30 degrees in one or two spots in the Gulf of Mexico in fact, and off the US East Coast temperatures are increasing there as well. In the Eastern Pacific, temperatures also still increasing in the eastern part of the region there, up in the Gulf of Tehuantepec, over 30 degrees Celsius, but still that massive cliff edge as storms move on towards the west there, which means that we're not really going to see any long trackers at the minute. Uh, Western Pacific, very warm waters in the Philippine Sea, up to 32 degrees possibly in some areas. We tip enjoying waters of around 29 degrees right now, though it was better in previous days. And in the Bay of Bengal, very warm waters here as well, over 30 degrees Celsius, and a few spots in the Arabian Sea likewise. So when we compare it to average, which is also a big measuring stick really, the orange and red zones being above average, any blue zones there below average, well in the Atlantic quite a few spots are above average there, the Gulf of Mexico in particular, but also the Sargasso Sea region. Eastern Pacific in general is a little bit below average and despite that uh, it's produced the most amount of storms outperforming the other two basins four to one and in the western pacific of course it is above average there as well east china sea the hot spot right now as a matter of fact so the whole region here this is the oceanic heat content huge amounts of energy still in there in the philippine sea storms will have a lot of luck when they really get going in that area not so much the south china sea even though utip was the first one to form Eastern Pacific was looking okay in those spots to the far east and the Atlantic, uh, western part of the Gulf, uh, in, sorry, the uh, Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico looking really good there now. Uh, some very high energy areas. Um, so if you get a small storm in that area, rapid intensification chances are going to go right up. But will it be anytime soon? Well, not if you ask the GFS. In the next five days, it doesn't predict any Atlantic systems, but there is that Eastern Pacific one there. Of course, that's Delilah moving off and eventually dies off near Socorro Island, which has killed off two storms already. Um, and maybe we can try and see behind that, maybe that next system, it doesn't really get anywhere by the looks of things. And GFS is still hinting at a possible Atlantic system just hugging the northern tip or northern coast of Honduras, although not really showing 
showing much on that latest run. Here it is showing Rue Tip, and you just maybe have seen a flash of yellow there as it was moving over the Litsu Peninsula. Possible second Typhoon Peak just as it makes that second and probably final landfall. Moving briskly off to the northeast, getting swept up there, and it becomes, uh, well, loses its identity very quickly, in fact, within the next two days by the looks of things there. Um, and what's left of it might end up feeding some um, convective weather towards Japan. Looking at rainfall over that time period though, this storm could still do a lot of damage there, mainly in the form of flooding, because over that time period, the next seven days, we could be seeing an enhanced amount of rainfall up and above 300 millimeters there in quite a few spots along the trail of the storm. Even in places that it's already visited, such as Hainan, we could see an additional 250 millimeters. And for monsoonal developments, just looking over towards Myanmar there, one or two spots there getting up towards uh, 250, if not double that, sorry, 500 millimeters of rainfall there for one or two spots. In the medium range, there's not actually very much to look at, believe it or not, but in the Western Pacific, the GFS is throwing up another tropical storm, curiously, way out to sea, uh, not really affecting anyone, possibly the Agasawara Islands, uh, but it's a fairly weak one and ends up drifting off towards the northeast and then later towards the east. So um, a short-lived, relatively weak storm there in the Western Pacific being depicted by the GFS, pressure in the 990s. Nothing else in the medium range, so scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Full City merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. You can also find our pages across social media and wherever we are, our outlets, through our Linktree page. And in the fantasy range, which is never to be taken seriously, just got to emphasize that always. But in fact, even this isn't showing that much this time around. It's the Eastern Pacific again that might throw up another storm in that very long range. This is day 10 to 16, so we're very near the end of the month here. There's another run of the mill, uh, but rather broad tropical storm there. Very much like Delilah, as a matter of fact. Moving on, paralleling the coast of Mexico, not quite hitting, uh, and then moving off towards the west in the end. So, a very um, sedate month, if that turns out to be true um, in the grand scheme of things. What was not sedate was what happened in 1974, where we had one extra system, and it was a strong one. Hurricane Connie, which was peaking as a strong Category 3, very compact hurricane there in the Eastern Pacific, was turning towards the north at this point as well. Uh, let's think of Cosme, but much stronger as a matter of fact. Um, quite a decent comparison, though Connie was a little bit further south. We also had Dolores, which pulled 1974 level with this year so far for named storms on this day. And Emma had formed in the Western Pacific that was heading towards the Philippines as a tropical storm. So, busy times right now, certainly busier than it has been, but still waiting for the first Atlantic storm, which will be named Andrea. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name now is Eric. And in the Central Pacific, it will be Iona. Still code orange, with 30 storms to our year name now. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Sepat. And in the North Indian Ocean, it remains Shakti even though we did have a tropical storm that probably should have been named earlier in the year. And in the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian region, next name is Fina. Southwest Indian Ocean, Lyra, if it's before the end of the month. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Ermil. That's it from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again soon. Become an ultimate fan today.